Welcome to Vital MTB's 2022 short travel test session. In recent years, the line between cross country and trail bikes has begun to blur as World Cup cross country racing has steadily moved towards more aggressive and technical courses, while everyday riders are looking for bikes that fly up climbs and provide a comfortable, stable, and fun experience on the way back down. While they aren't quite XC race bikes, they also aren't exactly trail bikes. So what are they? Eager to see what all the hype is about with these short travel, ride everything mountain bikes, we brought together four pedal hungry and downhill capable bikes to see how they perform across various terrain. Our goal was simple, find out where this exciting new category of mountain bike shines, what unique features set them apart, and ultimately help riders discover which bike would best complement their trails and preferences. In this video, we'll discuss the performance of Scott's Spark 910. To read the full review, head to vitalmtb.com. Easily one of the most head-turning bikes of recent times with its integrated suspension design, Scott Spark achieved the best balance of climbing and descending performance. We tested the slacker and longer travel Spark 910 with 120 millimeters of rear wheel travel paired with a 130 millimeter fork. Featuring a 65.8 degree head tube angle, the Spark was the second slackest in the group. At the core of the Spark's integrated shock design is a link driven single pivot with a flex pivot in the seat stay that is aesthetically striking and fosters the most prominent character trait of the Spark, responsiveness. With the shock position low in the bike and the frame divided into just two pieces, the Spark had the stiffest feel. Removing or adjusting the shock is achieved via a removable plastic cover under the down tube. Setting sag is done with a sag indicator sticker on the seat tube pivot or by peeking through a window cut out in the frame. Since the sticker option requires a second set of eyes to set sag, we opted for the window option even though it took some patience to move the shock o-ring. But patience is a virtue and luckily we only had to set sag once per tester. Integration continues with all cables running internally through the Synchros headset. Plastic covers around the stem and special headset spacers guide cables through the headset, creating a snug fit that made the Spark the quietest bike in the group. I feel like most people that saw this bike when we were out riding the last few weeks commented on the cockpit setup with all your cables running through your head tube. And personally, like when you're riding, looking down, it's such a clean cockpit. Running a Garmin, you have the built-in mount. Like I loved how it all looked. I get the other end if you're, you know, gonna be wrenching on your own bikes. I'm sure it adds some complication to that, but Personally, I was a fan of it. I would, my only reservation and hesitation with the bike is that you, the way you buy it with how the headset spacers are and it all being an integrated system, you have limited options to mess with how high your stem is. Um, and I would definitely lean towards doing bars that are wider than 760 mils. I think probably most people nowadays are running bars that are wider than that. The Spark 910 also features Scott's proprietary lever-actuated twin-lock suspension system that simultaneously adjusts the fork and shock to offer three ride modes. Retailing for $6,299, US dollars, the 910 build kit comes with components that perform well when climbing and descending. The build also offers riders the most flexibility to easily alter the intended use of the bike with minimal component adjustments. During testing, multiple hypothetical scenarios about component changes that would benefit the bike in either direction were discussed. For example, how much better would the Spark climb with light carbon wheels? We are only going to focus on how the Spark 910 comes stock, but it's something to keep in mind as you could easily have two wheel sets and end up with two bikes in one. The 910 build includes a Fox 34 Performance Elite fork with a Fit4 damper, a proprietary Fox new shock, Shimano's XT 12-speed drivetrain and XT two-piston brakes, Synchro Silverton 2.0 wheels, and Schwalbe's Wicked Wheel tires. On the trail, the Spark was an incredibly light, agile, nimble, and responsive bike that demanded precise riding. Despite weighing 27.4 pounds, it accelerated with ease and provided a firm platform that we could press against to squeeze speed out of the smallest trail features. The Spark definitely feels like almost as fast as the XE when you like stand up and just bang out a few quick pedals. It's so snappy and quick to get back up to speed and really feels like all of your energy is going towards forward momentum. I would describe the bike on descents being very, like a very lively demeanor. It's super responsive. The rear suspension is firm and feels like it gives you a nice platform to really pump corners and over rollers on, but it also can be almost kind of bouncy in situations, which can be really nice if you're riding a trail where you're trying to maximize all the speed out of it. I also found in some situations when maybe it gets a bit more dynamic and there's a lot of compressions happening one after the other, 
The bike will definitely start to bounce around a little bit. It'll remind you, you only have a 20, 120 millimeters of travel. It was, uh, it's one of those well-rounded bikes, uh, but being a little lighter, um, if there was a, a rock coming up, you did get deflected slightly. Uh, it didn't feel as planted as some of the other bikes, but it felt like the best kind of overall, um, like descender, um, comfort wise. Despite lacking some composure, the Spark made up for lost time in rowdy sections by carrying great speed on both smooth and flat terrain. Unfortunately, like the YT Izzo, the Spark 910 came with a 150 millimeter dropper post that limited our ability to shift our weight rearward, lowering our confidence on descents. Compounding this problem was the integrated cable system that did not allow us to raise the stem via headset spacers. A couple of the uh, dislikes for myself for the Spark was um, I really wish it had a longer uh, seat post. It comes with a 150. Um, my legs are longer, so I need about a 175 to a 200, um, or I have uh, a lot of seat posts um, hanging out on the descents. When climbing, we were not immediately convinced the Spark would be a strong performer due to its upright body position pedaling. While the Izzo had a similar pedaling position, we expected the Spark to put us in a more aggressive attack mentality. It shares the same frame as Scott's full-blown cross-country bike after all. The Spark also relied heavily on the twin lock system to maintain speed and efficiency climbing. The rear suspension design remained very active when open and would suck speed out of trails. Once we locked out the suspension, the Spark's climbing abilities were transformed and hammering up trails was enjoyable. Um, this thing climbing, it was, uh, it was pretty awesome because like when it was fully locked out, um, it still flexed a little bit. Um, for me, I like that. So it's not as rigid and bouncy. So um, like traction was, was premium on this thing. This bike definitely fares well with the lockout switch. I think if you ride this bike open, it's quite active. And even with it in the full locked out mode, it still provides a little bit more suspension movement than like the XC does when it's locked out. And I, I think I enjoyed that more. I think it provided a more kind of like consistent feel when you're climbing. It's easier to like keep a more fluid pedal stroke. I don't think maybe that, that might be why it's not the fastest, but I think for a lot of our trails around here that are smooth, but you'll have, you know, like the occasional rocks and bumps, it felt really good locked out because it was carrying pretty good speed and then was a little bit more comfortable. So when I was pedaling the Spark completely open, there was some pedal induced movement. If you're using the metric of anti-squat, it's about 80%. It's, you know, it really wasn't a huge hindrance for myself, but that twin lock system is right there. So obviously we were like toggling between that on a very frequent basis. In that regard, it was just super active. There were uh, significant changes in how the bike felt and with one click on the twin lock, it felt as if that seat tube was ever so slightly steeper uh, with that shock's second chamber in that what they call the nude shock. It basically limits the travel, so it feels like a smaller bike than it actually is. The advantage of it feeling smaller is that it still has traction. So when it's completely open, yeah, it feels a little bit sluggy. One click, it was noticeably more efficient. The seated position was a little bit better. And with that third click down, it was as stiff as the other ones. Some might find it concerning that a 120 millimeter travel bike <laughs> relies on suspension lockouts to perform while climbing and your fears are valid. But once we became accustomed to the strong suits of each twin lock mode, we grew to enjoy the ability to quickly toggle between each mode to find the best suspension package for a given trail. What we were disappointed by was the quality and design of the twin lock lever given how reliant the spark was on the system. The use of a single bar clamp to mount the unit to the handlebar allowed the levers to flex when being pushed, making them feel cheap and flimsy. With three levers bunched close together, it was also hard to identify which lever was being engaged. On countless occasions, we reached to lock out the suspension, but instead dropped our seat post. Yeah, this might be the... So this one turbo boost? Yeah, so we have Eco Trail and Boost here, <laughs> depending on what you're feeling. Yeah, the best part is when you go to unlock it and you just put your dropper down. I have done that like a few times. 
As for standout components on the Spark 910, we were surprised by Schwalbe's wicked wheel tires that were fast rolling with just enough grip to maintain control and descent. They weren't the lightest tires in the test, but the sidewall support was more substantial than the Max's XO casing used on all the other bikes. We also found the performance of Fox's 34 Performance Leap fork and new rear shock better than anticipated. The simpler Fit4 damper and small rear shock held up nicely to moderate abuse and provided enough support to match the abilities of the Spark. So what's the bottom line on Scott Spark? So I would say Scott Spark is a perfect option for somebody who is kind of looking for one bike to do it all and might be somebody who has two sets of wheels, one that's, you know, more XC focused and super light for, you know, wanting the bike to be as light as possible, very fast climber, efficient, nimble, all that. And then you might have a second wheel set that's a little bit burlier with burlier tires on it that, you know, you can go do a backcountry ride or, you know, even, even like some laps in a bike park and it's going to hold its own. You know, it's, I think really depending on the type of rider and the trails you have, you can build this bike up to be, you know, to be really capable in a lot of settings. This bike I felt was the do everything bike. It didn't lean towards climbing more. It didn't lean towards descending more. It did everything extremely well. This bike is for somebody who wants to just buy one bike and not have to buy and do well at everything. So um, if you had to, you know, go try to keep up with your buddies on the descent, if you want to go climb for a while, um, if you want to swap out some wheel sets, now you have a race bike. Um, this is, like I said, this is probably the Swiss Army bike out of the group uh, that I feel can really. That. Um, charge okay. hard either way with just a, suit, a few uh, adjustments. For more in-depth analysis of Scott's Spark 910, please head to vitalmtb.com for the complete review. And to check out our complete short travel test session, click the link at the end of this video. Thanks for watching.